Hey guys, welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the newest episode of Fear of the Walking Dead, Season 2, Episode 2, We All Fall Down. I gotta be honest, guys, this show is really, really bad. It's, like, kind of fun to watch because you get to dump on it as you watch it. It's just, like, you can point out how bad it is. The Walking Dead, there's not that many times where you can just say, this is honestly crap and I don't want to watch this anymore. But Fear of the Walking Dead has reached that point. But to start off this review, let's just get into the out of 10 review. So from 1 to 10, what would I rate it? I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10. This was just really bad. It was. It didn't even get like the halfway mark where it's like not good, not bad. This goes under. I, I was debating making it a 3 out of 10, but that was just too harsh because... There are some scenes in this episode that are interesting, and even though pretty much nothing in this episode moves the plot forward, so it, like, was not needed at all, there's just a slight touch of stuff that might move the plot forward in some way. Other than that, it's pretty much, this is just a big spinning our wheels episode, and this episode made me feel like it was an episode of The Incredible Hulk, where you have a guy traveling town to town, meeting new people and helping them out, and then leaving. Only this is the opposite, where they meet new people, screw over their lives, and then leave. Yeah. It seems like these main characters, wherever they go, hell follows. It's just, they ruin everything and every position they're in, which you can say that pretty much happens with the Walking Dead characters as well, but with these guys, it's a little worse. Anytime they get to a place or they meet people, the people die, the place goes to hell, and people will be doing good, and then they get there and it's going down. But then again, that does happen in The Walking Dead, but it's done well, and they don't talk for 500 hours during it. This episode was mainly talking. That was a slight bit. The biggest points of action in this episode was just Chris and that kid Seth killing a couple of walkers, which was not really action-filled at all. It felt... This episode felt like they had a lot of budget actually put into it to show some different scenery, different places. I wish they put that money into something else. Like, if they were locked up in a house with walkers invading and they have to keep the house under protection, or even if they were out on the boat and they were getting chased by pe other people on a boat, that would be more interesting than them meeting another family, talking, nothing happening, and then the end. Anyway, let us let me look at the main talk points of the episode. So, Nick's, Nick is wearing a new undershirt in this episode. He's wearing that blue shirt. I don't know if we've... I haven't really looked and seen if he's wearing different shirts in previous episodes, but now it was more apparent with him having a blue shirt. So it's a little step closer, even though he's still wearing the old man pants and the old man shirt. And I wouldn't doubt if he's wearing the old man chonies. You know, the whole underwear thing. That... That is just gross. Nick is gross in that way. It's weird. And, yeah, th when I say there's not really any plot points that move the story forward here, this entire episode was a spinning wheel. If they took people from this episode that they meet with them, then it would mean something. It would have a reason. But they didn't. They didn't do anything, really. The, the whole family thing was just for a small little story arc that I don't think is going to mean anything, unless maybe further down the road we run into these people, which I don't think so, because it seems to me like the dad is dead, the mom is dead, and the kid is dead, so it's now just this brother and his little brother, so there's really no point in this. This episode is completely unnecessary, that if it didn't happen... And then we go to the third episode, I'm sure we wouldn't have that big of a missing part there. And then, it seemed like in the previous episode, when the boat was coming, it was like, right on them, and they have no choice but to run, and they'll be getting shot at as they run on their boat. But no, it's just like, oh, there's a boat coming! Blah, 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 blah. Uh, to evade them, we better go on to shore somewhere so that they can't get us so well. They obviously have some sort of tracking device, and they're faster than us, and it's a bigger boat. So let's just go up to somewhere. Oh, how about this ranger part? It's it, boring. It was just where where they could have had a good conflict. They could have had some interesting something going on. Instead, they just went for the easy out. And that is what Fear the Walking Dead always does. They always just go for the easy route. Not really something that a 
good show would do. Okay. And, um... Did you notice those G.I. Joes that that kid was playing with, though? Those Joes, look at their face! That is the most demented toy I've ever seen. Now, they've obviously taken an actual figure and just swapped a head on because they didn't want to make it obvious that they're using a product that they would have to, like, probably pay the company for. So they put these butt-ugly heads on them with these huge eyeballs that are, like, pointed towards each other. It was... that was scarring just to look at those toys. Well, I'm the toy man, so of course. <laughs> okay, so... And that whole interaction with the kid, that any time the Alicia, Nick, or Chris were act interacting with the kids, it felt unnatural and awkward. Like, when Nick is hanging out with the little kid, everything he said would kind of made me cringe. It was like, ugh. I would not act like that around a kid. It's just... Awkward, yeah. Just awkward. <laughs> okay. So, Strand might be doing something crooked here. I, I really like Strand as a character, and I hope that they're not making him a bad guy, but he was talking on the phone, and, however, the way he was talking on the phone sounded a bit to me like he was talking to someone he knew, perhaps someone, a uh, woman or something, because he didn't talk like he was angry, he didn't talk like he was demanding or commanding, or anything like that. It was just a soft sort of... A uh, voice that you would have if you were talking to like your mom or something. Where, whereas, I think if he was talking to some drug dealer that he's in cahoots with or something, he wouldn't really be talking in that way. Just my opinion. Okay. And then Strand and Salazar sort of bump heads in this episode, and Salazar gets the looks into this uh, safe that's under a seat finds a machine gun, finds some uh, books and stuff. And Salazar, the whole episode, was, like, really on Strand's case, and he wants to, like, know if it's Strand's boat. What does it matter if it's Strand's boat or not? In the Walker apocalypse, he's helped them out, he's gotten them to this position, he's let them stay on the boat, and he got them to the boat. It's his boat. If, if they were there by themselves, they would not be near this boat, they would not have the boat, they would not even know about the boat. They wouldn't have even thought of the boat. So the boat's his, okay? I don't care. Even if he didn't own it, it's his. And, um, Chris acts like a uh, dork in this episode. He's moody and mopey again, and then he kills the walkers, blah, blah, blah. But that kid, Seth, I did kind of like that kid. I wish that he maybe went on the boat with them. But since he didn't, who cares? It, it's just a small thing. He just seemed like he was one of those people who knew how to kill walkers and he would have been efficient to have with them. And then they could have killed him off as fodder later on. Just because right now they don't really have a lot of fat on them. Like, uh, they Their characters are all like main cast right now and if they kill any of them off, it'll be eating away at them. Whereas they need to like thicken out the herd so that they can chop it down. Just for interest, so that we can get some enjoyment out of this slow-paced show. It's kind of like watching your turtle crawl across the floor, hoping that he gets to there faster. Come on, dude! I don't have all day! Faster! I'm done. I'm done. Turtle's not good. getting there. He's not done. I I'm almost done with the walk Fear of the Walking Dead. This show is just... I don't know. Maybe after a few days I'll just chill and be like... Eh, it was a slow episode, we run into those a lot. But we had a slow start of the season, we had a slow episode here, and then the first season was extremely slow, and it was boring. It was, There's slow and then there's boring. A slow thing could just be like taking their time but showing you interesting stuff, but then there's boring where they're taking a sl long time and they're not showing anything of interest during that time. Just awful all around the board. And that little girl who died, I, was, I think it's Nick's fault that she died, because she obviously didn't know where those drugs were. When she saw Nick touching that stuff, it made her go to there, and then she ate it. No one seemed to, like, point that out. Nick didn't seem to, like, feel any remorse for that, so whatever. I don't know. It's just, everything this episode was so unneeded. Um, yeah, and then, when, at the end, when... Seth wants to get his little brother back, and 
Salazar pull. I don't like Salazar anymore. I, I kind of liked him, gave him a chance. Now he's just, he's, the, he's being a butt. So, no, I'm not a fan. And Salazar pulls a gun on him and just because the guy wants his little brother back. They're like, I can understand them offering him a free ride with them, even though Strand probably wouldn't allow it. But the kid just wants his brother and he wants to go home. Let him have his dang brother. Who the heck cares? Strand is even yelling at them, get the kid off my boat, I don't want the kid. And then, it, pretty much it's only Maddie who's pushing for this kid to be on their boat. The kid doesn't even really want to be on that boat. Just let the kid go with his brother. The, I, I Just trust me. If I was a kid, I would rather be with my brother than with a bunch of strangers on a boat. It's just obvious. Familial ties are much better. Okay, so anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say for this boring episode. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Make sure to leave a comment in the questions that is TWD related, Fear the Walking Dead related, I guess, too. And um, I will answer you in the Saturday Answers video that I always have, which usually sometimes pushes on Sunday. Anyway, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.